Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel or welcome if it's your first time here. My name is Katherine Young and I'm a creative. And you have landed in my 30 Days Thrifting at Goodwill series. And today we are in Egan. Um, it is a suburb south of St. Paul in Minnesota. And we're gonna go check this Goodwill out, see what's in store. For me, this has been a really, really great Goodwill to check out. Um, this is kind of in my stomping grounds. I have found a head vase collection here before. Collection, yeah, over a dozen. I found mid-century fish. I found a lot of left in, a lot of Christmas. So this is a good stop for me. So hopefully we will find some good things in store that um, you will enjoy today. So come on, let's go see what is in store. Goodwill is one of the most common thrift store chains across the U.S. And here in the Twin Cities, Minnesota, we have a lot of them. And I asked y'all if you would like a thrifting series in Goodwill, and well, by overwhelming majority, you said yes. So come along with me as we go thrifting here in the land of 10,000 lakes. We'll go from store to store, a new store each day, and we'll find some amazing vintage deals, some items we can quickly flip for a profit, and some items to collect. We'll also find some surprises along the way. <laughs> so join me for 30 days thrifting Goodwill. Let's see what's in store. <laughs> okay, y'all, let's get in there and have a good thrifting day. <laughs> All right, so the first thing I do, as always, is I go in and I head off looking for the purses, always on the hunt for a vintage purse. And this Goodwill puts the purses kind of on the end caps of the different aisles, which isn't my favorite thing because I don't like how they're in little clusters. But I do think it kind of helps you see them better because, you know, you're only looking at a few at a time. Now, that is a vintage style, but that is not a vintage purse. That is definitely a reproduction piece. I thought it was priced pretty high for being a reproduction piece, but it was cute. This is also a reproduction piece. This is not a vintage box purse. But I did think, yet again, it was cute, but it did have a lot of damage. The hinges were broken. Over in the furniture, I thought this was lovely. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love how the drawers bow out on that piece. Those two were lovely, too. And I really liked these. I thought they had such a great, like, Florida vacay vibe. Really neat pieces. I also found this lamp, but look at the rim. That is flashed, so that is a something I'm going to pass on. Right after I walked away, a woman grabbed that lamp and put it in her cart. So she did not mind that kind of damage. Heading into the artwork now. That's kind of an interesting Last Supper. And I really liked this piece. It's super cute. Um, it does have um, some damage though. And I feel like it is missing like pegs or something. It's missing what it needs to be functional. So because it just is so large and the damage and missing parts, I am passing on that. But that was stinking adorable. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> I love Mickey and Minnie. They are the hottest couple around. Hottest celebrity couple, if you will. <laughs> and what do we have up here? These guys are vintage. They're kind of cute. not seeing much more. Now we are heading our way into the lamp graveyard. There's a teddy bear down there. There's some more like baby room lamps. I think those like 
mid-century wood ones are kind of neat. Um, there was a milk glass one. I liked this one. This was like reversed painted. I feel like this one might be the 30s, so that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, I mean, a better lamp section than usual, but I, I don't know. I, I really debated about getting this one because it was just super interesting being reverse painted. Thought this was cute. It's a hobbyist piece. Too much, though, for what that is. I could probably get that out of it. Now we're in the candle aisle. And what do I spy here? Oh, that's kind of cute, right? It's almost like a fish fairy lamp. Um, it's priced higher than I would want to pay, but I thought that was, that was kind of cute. <laughs> Love that. So that is kind of two pieces put together. I have a feeling that is a Viking um, candle holder there at the bottom. It, it just kind of feels like Viking. It might not be. And then let's see what else. Ooh, I love that one. Really, really pretty. No goodwill price. It looks like it came from an estate sale. I thought all these bunnies were cute. Bunnies do multiply. <laughs> and then back here we have a Fenton ruffle piece. It's that cabbage rose. Um, it's just priced too high for me. I don't think the color is particularly attractive to me. So I'm just not drawn to selling something like that. And then here we go. We did find a fairy lamp. So there is a fairy lamp. I feel that that is priced too high. Those two white pieces back there also are probably fairy lamp bases, but I did pass. Ooh, Halloween's out already. Oh, I love the little, little home co guys. They're just so cute. Little home co spooky family there. <laughs> I really like it when stores keep out the holiday displays. I don't know. It's just fun to shop at all year round. Santa back there does look vintage, but he lost his hat. He might have been a decanter or something. The one next to him is pretty cool too. I love these horses, but I see them very, very often. So I usually, I just don't pick them up because I see them all the time. And then back here, I'm noticing something. It is, um, it's made to look vintage, but this is a modern flocked bottle brush tree and it has just kind of seen some better days. So it's not something I could sell and it's a little more beat up than I want to put in my own personal display. So despite it being cool, I'm going to pass. They have some Easter out still. Cute little hobbyist bunny there, right? I love her little hat. <laughs> That's a cute mug. Whoever decided uh, Easter bunnies should have hats. <laughs> but that piece was neat. I've never seen that painted before. I've seen that just as clear glass. So it was neat to see that painted. And then they have stacks of cards. Goodwill or any thrift store is a great place to buy cards. Um, very inexpensive. Now we are in knickknack heaven, and this is my jam. Cute little hobbyist ghosty. Reads very like 80s, 90s to me. Oh, and look, 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 look. There's her friend. <laughs> very cute, very cute. Hmm, what do we see? I see that heart down there. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, dang it. Look, she's got a huge gouge out of her bonnet. Also not seeing a price on her. So uh, I'm passing. I'm not even going to ask about her price. The, the chip out of her is just too huge on the bonnet. Nobody will want to buy that. And what do we have up here? That kind of feels like a wade. And then that's really pretty. I don't know anything about these type of figurines. If you know anything about it, let me know. I see them often, but I never pick them up. 
That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. Oh, and look at this guy. How cute. Now he's a big, heavy piece of chalkware. Um, I'm looking all over for a price tag. And then I realized there's like change in him. So I was shaking him because I could hear the change. <laughs> this little guy is super cute too. So these are really cool vintage dogs, but I find dog people really weird. They only buy like their breed. So I usually stay away from dog items. I do wish that wasn't broken because that is heckin' cute. <laughs> see, here's another doggy thing. Um, see, people just like their certain breed. That's it. That's why there's a collection of the same breed. I just... I kind of find it weird. It does still have its squeaker, but I did pass on this little guy. This is really neat. I really liked the texture on it. It just had a really cool glaze. And this is weird. It. It looks very unappetizing. Whatever that art project is. Ugh. Oh, and then one of these little hobbyist guys. How cute is that? I thought this couple was really lovely. It 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 has a very cool drip glaze on it. Almost an acro agate glaze. Very, very beautiful. And it's not like zooming in. Sorry about the bad camera work there. Sometimes I don't notice uh, what my camera work is like until afterwards. <laughs> but a little high to buy the pair. So I'm going to pass on those. I was having trouble with my uh, camera focusing in this episode. I'm not sure why. I did find this over in the kitchenware. I really like it. Um, it is a compote that doesn't need a lid and it didn't have any chips, which was fantastic. So I'm going to put that one in the cart. This one, hmm, this one throwing me. Is it Fenton? Is it Pioneer Woman? I just don't know. I thought this was kind of funny. It's a teapot of your bathroom sink. I thought that was just like the most odd combination ever. And it had breaks and stuff, um, but just weird. Um, this guy, oh, so much breakage on that one. Goodness. I love this little piggy. I'm always drawn to the little piggies. I always think they're so cute. Love these covered butters. Y'all, we have to bring them back. People need to fall in love with these because I think they are amazing. And that is a fairy lamp base as well. Thought this was nice. So these, okay, so I did a Google lens search on these and I could not find them. They were priced really high. There were lots of chips on these. So if anyone knows what these are, let me know. Found some cool glass bake. I thought these were kind of cute. Went over to the glasses and I really did like these. They have a very Victorian um, kind of glass pattern. Um, I, I really did like them, but Ultimately, I just decided, you know, glassware, dinnerware doesn't sell for me, and I passed. Also love these mid-century ones. They are very reminiscent of Dorothy Thorpe. I don't know if they actually are Dorothy Thorpe. They were a great price. Um, I hummed and hawed about it, but I ultimately did decide to pass because of my experience selling glassware. Found a couple dragonware pieces. Um, I did check uh, the teacup off camera. This was not geisha ware. 
Um, and I did end up passing on them, but it was fun to see them in the thrift stores. I have found geisha wear in the thrift stores, so it is possible. How fun is that old Dayton's tag, huh? On that vintage mug. They had a lot of cute vintage mugs. They were all like these earth tone ones. Just a lot of cute vintage mugs on this end cap. <laughs> that's a that's a tourist one. Look at all these fun patterns. You could literally build a 70s mug set just off this end cap alone. There's so many neat ones. <laughs> they all kind of go together. Now we are in the metal aisle. Thought that was kind of cool. Kind of a groovy dude. Here's some Frank Coma. These are really classic pieces of Frank Coma. I thought the price was decent for a collector um, and they were in good condition. Not sure why they're in the metal aisle. <laughs> Not sure why this is in the metal aisle either, but it's really beautiful. It does have a big gouge out of it there. Um, I think it's priced high, but if there hadn't been a gouge, I actually probably would have considered picking it up because it was so beautiful. And y'all, I love these. These just make my heart flutter and I just want to save them all. Ugh, they're so pretty. Thought this like hobbyist craft was cute. Then we have like one of those Jesus lacquered artwork things. Um, you see, you see those a lot. That's a really common pose, and that is a lot of money for something like that. Very seventies. Thought this was fun. Very seventies as well. I can just see the basement that this was hung in. <laughs> These were kind of fun, all priced individually. And then this, unfortunately, was broken because that was really a neat piece. I was bummed it was broken and still priced so high. This was kind of cool, huh? This is one of those metal um, display pieces. Now we are in the full dish section. Um, and look at this pedal wear. I've never seen it in this style. I actually think the price is really good on that because pedal wear can go for big money. I'm going to pass on it. This isn't the find for me, but that is exquisite. Hmm. Let's see. What else did I find? Cute little teapot. I'm a sucker for a vintage teapot with a fun vintage pattern. And look at this lusterware. Lots of pretty lusterware. I really like these ones. That's a fun pattern, a little different than what you usually see. And I think $2.99 isn't bad, but yet again, I wish it wasn't priced individually. Love that little piggy. And then these pieces are more like the lusterware you typically see. Saw that vintage piece. There is a bunch of vintage pieces here, really neat. It was fun to see those lusterware pieces. Oh, and I love these little things. Um, I didn't pick this up because there wasn't much margin on it for me, but I thought it was cute. And I love that pattern and they had a bunch of pieces from that old pattern. Really pretty. I love that pattern. Then down here, I saw another piece that might be Dorothy Thorpe as I was heading out. And I love these. I love these sets. And that sunburst is beautiful. These are the most underrated vintage items. I love the snack sets. Love, 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 love. So I thought it went pretty well in there. This is the one piece I decided to get. I thought it was priced a bit high, but I still think I can make a decent profit on it. And I've never seen one of these where like it doesn't need a lid like this is how it is so I thought this was a really pretty piece so I'm pretty happy with it. And that's it y'all so if you like vintage thrifting creative projects and more this is the channel for you. Also be sure to check out the playlist of 30 days thrifting uh, goodwill so there's more content like this for you to check out and that is it. Stay creative y'all. Bye!